Hello everyone and welcome back to Cobain History. In today's video we will be taking a look at a neighborhood in London and see how it evolved through the ages. Belgravia is the neighborhood or you could also call it a district which we will be having a look at today. It is mostly located in the borough of Westminster but it also has a small sliver of land in the west which is located in the borough of Kensington and Chelsea. The dividing line being the former course of the Westbourne River. It lies east of Chelsea, south of Hyde Park and southwest of the gardens of Buckingham Palace. During the Middle Ages this area was known as the Five Fields. The Five Fields comprised of a series of marshy fields which were intersected by numerous footpaths. And there was also a main road going through it, which was the King's Road, which connected Westminster and Chelsea through the Five Fields. The Westbourne River, which is a tributary of the Thames, flowed through this area as well. It flowed into the Five Fields from Hyde Park, north of here, after which it passed through Knightsbridge. And the area of Knightsbridge took its name from the bridge that crossed this river. Past this bridge it flowed through the five fields and towards the south it flowed towards Chelsea. In the five fields where the King's Road crossed the Westbourne River there was a bridge known as the Bloody Bridge. This bridge was named the Bloody Bridge because it was frequented by robbers and highwaymen who favored the area for its isolation from the population centers. It was especially unsafe to cross the five fields at night. In 1728, a man's body was discovered by the bridge with half his face and five fingers removed. Here we are in, uh, at the border of Belgravia. It's uh, kind of at the edge uh, where uh, Westminster, the borough of Westminster, uh, goes into the borough of uh, Kensington and Chelsea. And um, I believe uh, it's here where the, where the bloody bridge was. So the, the Westbourne River. It, uh, it's underground somewhere, somewhere here, uh, but uh, in the ground is now the river that was diverted into pipes and uh, around here is where the bloody bridge was, where the, the uh, bad things happened at night. And uh, actually if you go over there, you can see there is uh, actually Sloan Square, one of the famous uh, squares in London. And even though the area had a reputation for crime and violence, Five Fields was a pleasant area during the daytime and numerous market gardens were established here. Belgravia is part of the Grosvenor Estate, which also includes a portion of nearby Mayfair and Pimlico. The Groveners, who at the time were still only Baronets of Eton, which is located in Cheshire, acquired the land in 1677, when at the age of 21 Sir Thomas Grosvenor married 12-year-old Mary Davies. She was the sole heiress to Abbey Manor, which included the five fields in their domain. And thus these lands passed to the Grosvenor family through this marriage. And it was Richard Grosvenor, the son of Thomas and Mary, who laid out the Grosvenor Square in Mayfair. But another century passed before Robert, first Marcus of Westminster, turned his attention to the part of his lands known as the Five Fields. The area began to be developed after the Napoleonic Wars and when George III moved to the nearby Buckingham House, which would later become Buckingham Palace. The first area to be developed was a row of houses that was built here, in what is now known as Grosvenor Place. And in the 1820s, Robert's son Richard Grosvenor, who would later become the second Marquess of Westminster, asked master builder Thomas Cubitt to build an estate on his land in an attempt to rival Mayfair in its prestige. And thus, most of Belgravia's buildings and squares were constructed in the following 30 years. While doing research, I found a book written by a Victorian in 1878, which was after the construction of Belgravia, which had taken place only a few decades before him writing the book. So here are a few quotes from that book. 
There was a time, and not so very distant in the lapse of ages, when much of Belgravia and other parts of the valley bordering upon London was a lagoon of the Thames. Indeed, the clayey swamp in this particular region retained so much water that no one would build there. Cubitt started to develop the area under a special act of parliament passed in 1826, empowering Lord Grosvenor to drain the site, raise the level and erect bars. At length, Mr. Thomas Cubitt found the strata to consist of gravel and clay of inconsiderable depth. The clay he removed and burned into bricks, and by building upon the substratum of gravel, he converted the spot from the most unhealthy to one of the most healthy in the metropolis, in spite of the fact that its surface is but a few feet above the level of the river Thames at high water during the spring tides. During the late rain, that of George IV, observes a writer in 1831, Lord Grosvenor has built a new and elegant town on the side of fields of no healthy aspect, thus connecting London and Chelsea and improving the western entrance to the metropolis at a great expense. So Cubitt excavated the clay and made bricks out of them, using them to construct the buildings on the exposed base of gravel. Also, the river Westbourne, which flowed through here, was diverted into underground pipes and still flows under Belgravia to this day. As well as Cubitt, the architect George Pazavi also designed many of the squares and buildings in Belgravia. So now it's time to take a closer look at what they constructed. But to better understand the layout of Belgravia, we will take a look into the history of the Grosvenor family first. This is another quote from the book I mentioned earlier. The Groveners are one of the most ancient of the untitled English aristocracy, their ancestors having been the chief hunter, Le Groveneur, to the Dukes of Normandy before the conquest. It was not till a century ago that they condescended to bear a title. But since then, their growth to the very foremost rank of the peerage has been steady and well earned. If personal worth and high honor combined with immense wealth are to be reckoned as any claim to a coronet. This quote explains something you might have noticed already. The family made a false climb up the peerage ladder. They weren't even full barons when they acquired this land. But by the time Belgravia was constructed, they had already made it to the title of Marquess of Westminster. And in the late 1800s, they even became dukes and they still are to this day. As you can see, they still retain their lower titles and a lot of the places in Belgravia make reference to these. So we are going to take a look at Belgravia, which is located over there. You can uh, pan over there if you would like. We're gonna go down that street in a moment, but uh, just uh, to see where it's located, to the north, uh, north of, I think it's north, well that way of Belgravia <laughs> is Hyde Park. Over there is another um, affluent, I think it's called, uh, area of London, there is Mayfair. Over there is Green Park, and uh, behind Wellington Arch is uh, the Buckingham Palace Garden, so that's uh, where the Queen lives. So this is uh, Belgrave Square. It was the first of uh, the three main squares to be built and uh, it was named after uh, Belgrave in, uh, it's in Cheshire, uh, which the Duke of, well, back then when this was built, it was a Marcus of Westminster, also had the title of uh, Viscount of Belgrave. Uh, and thus they named uh, this square after Belgrave in Cheshire. Also, um, if you pan around, you can see you got a few embassies around here. I think I uh, recorded uh, some of it before. Um, but yeah, this was the main square where Belgravia centered around. And thus uh, also Belgravia took its name from the square, which took its name from the town in Cheshire.
So this is uh, Eaton Square. We can't go in because it's private. Um, show that. <laughs> yeah, you have to have like a key card to get in. But, uh, but yeah, this is um, it's uh, the second uh, garden square uh, that was built here. Uh, it is a lot longer than uh, Belgrave Square where we were earlier, um, but it's uh, it's not as uh, as fancy. Um, but still a nice place to come. Um, also the the road, well because uh, the park is split in two. There's like a lane here, a road in between, and then. Uh, after that there's another park. Uh, the road in between actually uh, replaces the King's Road that was here when uh, when it was five fields uh, back in the day. Wait, there's a road called the King's Road? Yeah, this oh. is the King's Road. <laughs> I, I don't think it's called that anymore. I thought that was it a might be. thing, but that's a, yeah. another thing where they took from real life. Exactly. So um, yeah, the King's Road, it connected, uh, it connected Westminster to Chelsea through the five fields. Um, it doesn't exactly follow the same route as the old King's Road, that road over there, but uh, it uh, ends and starts at the same place uh, where it connects uh, Chelsea to, to Westminster. Also, um, this road that intersects it here is called, I think it was Eccleston Road, uh, an other reference to uh, one of the uh, governor's uh, properties. They actually have their family tomb in the village of Eccleston, uh, also in Cheshire. Uh, also Eaton Square, another reference to one of their holdings, because uh, their primary seat of the family is uh, Eaton Hall in Cheshire as well. So a lot of references to their uh, lower titles that they had before they came to like the title of Westminster. Basically staying humble. Yeah, staying <laughs> humble, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so now we are going down that road to the last of the three garden squares and the smallest uh, called Chester Square. So we'll go there in a moment. So this is uh, Chester Square. This is the last and uh, smallest of the three main garden squares built by the by the Grosvenors in the in the early 1800s. Um, yeah, it was named after the city of uh, of uh, uh, Chester. Members of the Grosvenor family also represented Chester as members of Parliament. Abbey Street is also roughly built on the old road which led to the Abbey Farm and Manor in the ages before Belgravia. And Abbey Square is where the farm actually stood. This is Londa Square. It has some of the most expensive properties in the world. A Russian businessman bought two stucco houses in Londa Square in 2008. These two houses were merged together and with a total of 8 bedrooms are expected to be worth £150 million, which exceeded the value of the previous most expensive house in London at that time. The large villas and elegant townhouses which comprised Belgravia were first owned by members of the aristocracy, but following World War II, the makeup of Belgravia changed and more and more embassies and institutions were set up in the area. Belgrave Square in particular is noted as a home of embassies. Expensive land values in Belgravia mean that its properties are out of reach for all but a small handful of buyers. Many buyers originate from or are based overseas, which means that some properties are unoccupied for part of the year. This has contributed to the area feeling somewhat disconnected and quiet. The district's most central shopping streets are Elizabeth Street in the south and the Motcombe and West Hulking Streets in the north. On Elizabeth Street there is also a pub named after Thomas Cubitt. And there is only one conventional supermarket in Belgravia. So we are now in like the northern, well, uh kind of the upper parts of Belgravia and this is like the only uh, conventional supermarket that they have here and uh, of course it's, uh, it's Waitrose in a nice building uh, for the non-UK viewers Waitrose is a, a more like um, higher how, it's how the most say? affluent supermarket yeah. uh, catering at the, uh, the highest income brackets <laughs> of any major supermarket exactly that's, that's yeah. the polite way you put it 
Belgravia's continued fortunes have a lot to do with the Grosvenor estate. Large parts of Belgravia are still owned by the family-operated property company, the Grosvenor Group, with the current Duke of Westminster as its figurehead. Hugh Richard Louis Grosvenor is the seventh Duke of Westminster. He inherited the title of Duke of Westminster on the 9th of August 2016, after the death of his father. He is also a billionaire businessman and landowner, and the Duke and his family are estimated to be worth around £10.1 billion, according to the Sunday Times Rich List in May of 2019 and this would make him the world's richest person under the age of 30. Thanks for watching this video. I have made a second video about this, where Ibiak Stoikat and I are walking through Belgravia and kind of comment on what we see. We talk more about the embassies located there, we also visit the Thomas Cubitt pub, we talk about the general area a bit more and also a little more about the history. So if you're interested in having a look at that, it will be on screen right now. Or if you're interested in other historical topics, you can also check out my YouTube channel to find a wider variety of topics.